In today's lesson, we will discuss routing in packet networks. The figure shows a packet switching network providing communication services among multiple nodes. For example, from node 1 to node 6, there are three possible loop-free routes, 1 to 3 to 6, 1 to 4 to 5 to 6, and 1 to 2 to 5 to 6. Which path is the best one? The optimality depends on the objective function that the network tries to optimize. For example, minimum delay, minimum number of hops, maximum bandwidth, and the minimum cost. Please note that node here actually is the router. In general, a routing algorithm should seek one or more goals, such as rapid and accurate delivery of packets, adaptability to changes, robustness, and low overhead. Once the routing algorithm has determined the set of paths, the path information is stored in the routing table so that each router knows how to forward packets. The specific routing information stored depends on the type of packet switching. But in general, creating a routing table needs information on state of links, needed to distribute link state information, and compute optimal routes based on link state information. The figure shows a routing table for a datagram network. Each table contains an entry for each possible destination in the network. Each entry specifies the next hop that is to be taken by packets with associated destination. When a packet arrives, route is determined by table lookup. The problem is, when the number of destinations become very large, the size of the routing table may exceed the practical implementation limit. For example, Internet Protocol IP use datagram packet switching across networks. Each host has two-part IP address, network address plus host address. Routers do table lookup based on network address only, which will reduce size of routing table significantly. Network addresses can be assigned so that they can also be aggregated which can further reduce the routing table size. In a virtual circuit packet switching network, route is determined during connection setup. The virtual connection identifier VCI is local to the router. At each link, the identifier may be translated to a different identifier by label switching, depending on the available VCIs at a given link. The size of routing tables can be reduced if a hierarchical approach is used in assignment of address. If the addresses are not hierarchical, as shown in the figure, there is no relationship between address and routing proximity. The routers need to maintain 16 entries in their routing table. But in this figure, the hosts at each of the four sides have the same prefix denoted by the first two bits of the address. Therefore, the two routers need only maintain tables with four entries each. Essentially, hosts that are near each other should have addresses that have common prefix. In this way, routers need to examine only part of the address, the prefix, in order to decide how a packet should be routed. Next, we examine two specialized approaches to routing, called flooding and diffraction routing which used a certain network scenarios. Flooding is very useful in starting up networks and propagation information into all nodes. The principle calls for a packet switch to forward an incoming packet to all ports except the one the packet was received from. Flooding is an effective routing approach when the information in the routing tables is not available, such as during system startup. But the problem is flooding may easily swamp the network as one packet creates multiple packets that in turn create multiples of multiple packets, generating packets in an exponentially close rate. The next few view graphs illustrate the exponential growth in number of packets generated during flooding. To reduce resource consumption due to flooding, one simple method is to use a time-to-live field 
In each packet, that limits the number of hops to a certain diameter. Each router decrements the time to live by one before flooding the packet. If the value reaches zero, the router discards the packet. Another approach is each router adds its identifier before flooding and discards the packet if it contains the same identifier of the router. Furthermore, sequence number can be used for ease of implementation. Diffraction routing requires the network to provide multiple paths for each source and destination pair. One advantage is that the node can be bufferless, since packets don't have to wait for a specific port to become available. If the preferred port is unavailable, the packet can be deflected to another port, which will eventually find its own way to the destination. Deflection routing often works well in a regular topology. One example of regular topology is called a Manhattan Street Network. In this lesson, we learn three key points. First, routing algorithm optimality depends on the objective function that network operator try to optimize. Second, hierarchical addressing reduces the size of routing table. And finally, flooding is very useful when routing tables are unavailable.